we're gonna free access the Arduino. So, how is the how is the weather like, Frederick? In uh, in in the part that you are in right now. Hello. Hello. So yeah, speaking of the weather, yesterday in Berlin we had one of the hottest day, right? I think it was about thirty six degrees. Um, it's never like that uh, in in Berlin. I've been here for five years. Um, the average temperature usually, I mean, if it's the summertime, is about twenty something degrees, you know. So. And I think global warming really has a uh, huge impact here. I'm not sure if that is because of global warming or is it because generally, yeah, the climate is getting weirder and weirder in every part of the world. Sure, sure, it's okay for us. Um, maybe we can start. Just uh, I want to thank everyone for taking time off today. Uh, to join us in this little discussion and introduction and presentation about Wikibase. My name is Alan Ang. I'm the partner manager at the Wikimedia Germany. I'm responsible for connecting global institutions and onboarding them into Wikidata and Wikibase. I also act as a point of contact and information for exchanges between partners, Wikimedia Germany, software department, you know, and the Wiki communities. And I'm originally from a small tropical country called Singapore, which I'm sure many of you know. Um, Singapore has a huge community of uh, the, uh, the uh, our Indian friends, Indian community since the early days. And uh, we really uh, live together very well. And today I have with me my colleague, Muhammad, who is our community communications manager. Uh, Muhammad, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, hi everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, I think I'm <clears throat> I'm meeting most of you for the first time. I wasn't in the earlier meeting, so really good to see you all. See the faces behind the emails. Um, yes, I'm Mohammed. I am originally from Ghana. Um, I moved to Berlin about a year and you know five months or so ago. Um, and I do the community communications for Wikidata and Wikibase. Um, so I'm basically the middleman sitting between the community and then the software development team and making sure feedback is relayed to both ways, um, just so we can keep developing the product that people are comfortable using. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this meeting. I'm looking forward to how the conversation is going to go. So, and Mohammed, you're the you were the well, you are still the uh, community leader in Ghana, right, for Wikipedia. Or? Um, so I used to be one of the community leaders in Ghana. Um, so I've actually been a community member for quite a long time, like 10 years now. So I, I'm a community person coming from the community. Um, so yeah, I have that perspective also, which is really good when I meet community folks like you. I'm really curious to see and to listen to like some of the challenges that you're having with not just Wikidata and Wikibase, but you know, generally with the Wikimedia project. So this is really interesting. Okay, thank you. Please allow me to share my presentation slide. So let me know if you can see. Can everyone yes. see now? Yeah? I can, yes. It's in slideshow mode, right? Okay. <clears throat> because I can't see myself once I connect this. Yeah, so Yes, once again, thank you. So uh, first off, I will introduce us at Wikimedia Germany. If you see Wikimedia Deutschland, Deutschland essentially means Germany yeah? <laughs> in German. So many people are confused. I was confused when I was young. I was like, Deutschland, eh? you know, so, but actually I learned after I come here that, you know, Deutschland means Germany in German language. So I will also talk quickly about our, an overview of our link open data vision, which I think is very important. Um, and then, 
Muhammad Lee will talk then about Wikidata, Wikibase, and he will talk about Wikibase and the future. And I will share some use cases for everyone so you'll be able to understand and see how our Wikibase are being used. So, um, Wikimedia Germany, Wikimedia Deutschland, we are a non profit organization based in Berlin. We are the German chapter of the global Wikimedia movement. Um, we work to provide more people with more access to more knowledge, which I'm sure uh, the community. Uh, the Goa community is also very familiar with. You know? So in Wikimedia Deutschland, we have, okay, sorry, Wikimedia Germany, yeah? we have a software development department and we have a dedicated one, right? So our role is really to ensure that Wikimedia Germany gives access, everyone free access to more knowledge by delivering innovative and useful open source software. So at Wikimedia Germany, we develop and maintain Wikibase And which is, you know, so sorry, we develop and maintain Wikibase and we also develop and maintain Wikidata, which is one of the servers of the Wikimedia Foundation. So the software development teams in, um, in Wikimedia Germany, they build products for a large international community of users. So in order to ensure that we build the right products, you know, these users must play a central role in our product development processes. Hence, we develop a very community-centered development approach. Uh, what this means is that our community of users will inform our product development and we will work to ensure transparency around our work. So let me share briefly about our link open data vision. Since 2019, Wikimedia Germany and Wikimedia Foundation have been working together to publish strategy papers for Wikidata and Wikibase ecosystem. Basically, what we set out to do is to make sure that we are very much aligned on where we want to go to enable conversations outside of Wikimedia Germany and the Wikimedia movement to enable the ecosystem to grow. So generally, when we're talking about Wikidata and Wikibase ecosystem, we always use the term structured data to explain what we do. But we realize that this is not very aligned to what other people you know, do outside of Wikimedia. So we have been switching over to saying that we are doing link open data work. So we hear a lot about link open data, right? But what does link open data mean to us? We describe the vision statement to basically have a common goal for all activities around Wikidata and Wikibase ecosystem. So I will read out uh, some of the sentences first and then I'll give you a bit more context. I think this is very important because our link open data vision really underpins uh, what we do as an organization and why we are here, why we do what we do, right? So first off, we work towards a future in which people share the power to collect and organize the data that shapes humanity's understanding of the world. Basically, what we really want to achieve here is to have a community of people, not of corporations, not of companies, you know, that are motivated by other things other than free open knowledge, but people to have the power to collect and organize the data. Because data is basically the backbone for finding information, for generating knowledge. So this is basically the power that people need to start with and start from. So we add the second part of the sentence to make it clear that this is not just any data we want to organize and to collect, but we want to collect and organize data that is actually used by people to understand the world, right? To basically support the creation of knowledge bases that allows fair understanding of the world that is not distorted for any other reasons. So in the second stanza, I read to you, diverse communities around the world participate in Wikidata and in a network of specialized Wikibases, co-creating an open and free global knowledge graph in a thriving link open data web. So what this paragraph really does is it describes how we want to do that. So we want to have diverse communities, you know, not just communities based in um, the West Europe and North America, but diverse communities all over the world. Right now, we have a community for Wikidata and we're working to make that community diverse as well. But then Wikidata shouldn't be the only place for community. We basically want to have more places like Wikidata, but with different focus points. So Wikidata is, as some of you may know, is the database for general purpose knowledge of the world. That is not the only place where all data should live. So basically, there are specialists for special parts of data, such as authority files, you know, it's something that ideally should have its own home. And example like data on plants, video games, or other topics, you know, that 
are able to contribute to creating more knowledge and more insights, but also creating this layer that allows people to develop and create apps and services and provide knowledge in more than just one way. So we're working together with hopefully all of you, you know, to create that foundation right, of knowledge bases. So the last stanza says this, you know, this is the basis upon which people, companies, and institutions of all sizes can generate new insights, build new apps and services, and change the world for the better. So we are doing this because we believe that the world is a better place if everybody has information on their hands, and this is basically why we are doing what we do. So Wikidata and the Wikibase ecosystem are the foundation of our link open data work. Wikidata provides data and an ontology that others can use and build upon, and our Wikibase products expand this knowledge available through the link open data. So looking from the Wikimedia perspective, there are two things that what we are, that what we are really doing. You know, first is to work on Wikidata, and second is try to encourage and enable the Wikibase ecosystem as much as we can. So Wikidata is the knowledge base for general purpose data. So it provides data, not only, not only data, but also provides the ontology that others can build upon. So it is already a very important piece of the link open data web. But with the e Wikibase ecosystem, the Wikibase products, we are basically aiming to extend that network and to make Wikidata not the only place where data should live. So I'll hand over to Mohammad, who will talk about Wikidata and Wikibase a bit more, so you have a better understanding of what the products are. Mohammad? Yeah, thanks, Alan. Um, so as Alan mentioned, Wikidata and Wikibase are very intertwined. So just before we have a look at you know, the Wikibase data model, I would like to just give a quick recap of uh, what Wikidata is first. Um, so basically the idea of Wikidata, as many of you would already know, was born out of the need to do away with like manual titling, at least all the way back from 2007. Um, so Wikidata was launched in 2012 by Denny, you know, when he was still working with us here at Wikidata Germany. Um, anyway, so Wikidata is this free knowledge base that contains structured data, you know, just with facts and references and all of that. Um, Wikidata is linked to other databases, you know, by these external identifiers, about around 7,000 of them out of all of the 9,000 properties. Um, and those databases, you know, also be linked to other databases and even interlinking back to Wikidata, just as Alan pointed out. Um, some quick numbers, we see around 25,000 active editors to Wikidata per month. Um, you know, so by active editors, I mean people who make at least one edit every 30 days. Um, Wikidata has more than 95 million items and over a billion statements. There are like a trillion plus edits, you know, um, and about 70% of all of these edits are made by bots and more than 100 million of, um, of them are made by quick statements, which is a tool that is used to make mass uploads. Um, next slide, Alan. So like I said, Wikidata is intertwined with Wikibase. So it's easier to explain the data model of Wikibase using the data model of Wikidata. Um, if you look at Wikidata, things are generally modeled based on what we call triples. And the three different parts of a triple are what make up statement. So here on this slide, you are looking at, um, there's an item identifier which has some QID and there's a property instance of and a value which is human. So each statement at an item page links to a property and then this is assigned some value. So a triple can be read like a sentence in plain English as you know, a statement contain a subject, predicate and an object. So in this example, Maya Angelou is an instance of a human. Um, 
Now, the last part of a Wikidata triple are the values. So in this slide, we have our four different statements. My Angelus place of birth being St. Louis, or my Angelus, um, you know, award received at some point was the National Women's Hall of Fame and so on. So these values themselves are items with their own QIDs. And also, you know, they have their own statement that describe them if you go to those items. And that makes it possible to link from item A to item B and so on. But not all values at the end of a triple uh, items necessarily. For example, a date of birth or a point in time <clears throat> um, an award was received, for example, would, wouldn't necessarily be an item. It will simply just be um, um, a date you know, um, or some kind of string. And yeah, we do know that Wikidata is big. As Alan pointed out, there's so much information on it. It has 97 plus million items and, you know, 1.3 billion statements covering all sorts of knowledge. That's a lot of information stored in the knowledge graph. And this data has it's got to be used by someone, right? And there are so many ways that people can actually reuse the data on Wikidata. One of the most popular ways is to query Wikidata's knowledge base using this tool. If you're wondering, since you said yeah, so interlinked. Um, how that powers Wikidata. So let's take it from there. Is the software that powers Wikidata? Technical set of extensions that turns the media wiki software into a database for structured data. And the text and the biggest example out there of a wiki base is Wikidata. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, Wikibase was developed in 2012 and the primary goal was to power Wikidata. And then after a while, we started having people come to ask us, this is really cool. Can we run our own little Wikidata somewhere in our museum or in our library? you know, to catalog our, our, um, our collection. And yeah, and basically that was how Wikidata started to become exposed to the world as, you know, this separate product from Wikidata. So once Wikimedia Deutschland made that possible and, you know, opened up the software so people could now use it, and then it became easy to install a copy of like Wikibase um, and then use it to manage your own metadata, however you wish. Um, so with all the features of Wikidata that we described earlier, you know, ideally any Wikibase out there has access to the same features. So, you know, users can create and manage their own linked open knowledge base, you know, because Wikibase is so flexible, users can build their own data model that suits their need. So it doesn't need to have the same properties as Wikidata does, for example, once you have your own Wikibase, you know, you create whatever properties you want, define your ontology. And, you know, if you have a community of users, you know, you can come together and think through how you want to model the data in your, uh, the metadata that you have. And of course, users can query this knowledge base using Sparkle. Um, so this is really interesting. Um, yes, Wikibase is not only the knowledge base, you know, software out there. Uh, but what Wikibase is really good at is that, like I said, the data model is not imposed from the beginning. So typically you get a software, you know, you have tens or all of the parameters will be defined for you, the data model defined, and you really have no flexibility to do anything outside of that. 
my Wikibase is flexible. Once you install a copy of Wikibase from scratch, you get to develop your own ontology. So there are basically no limitations as to what you can do. In Wikibase, you can you know, connect items or the databases of your choice by linking them to, you know, to these other databases by the external identifiers. And also one really interesting thing about Wikibase is the, the fact that it is collaborative. So anyone with the read write access can go and add and change the data on it. And it is of course machine readable. That means like third party tools can connect to it, which makes it so much easier. Tools like Open Refine and Quick Statement and PyWiki Board. You can use them to build tools to interact with your wiki base. And then finally, um, allowing like multilingual labeling in Wikibase is one of its like huge selling points because it makes it so much easier for people who speak and understand different languages to be able to work together on the same project. Okay, now let's talk a little about Wikibase and the future. So um, we've come a long way. Over the last three years, we've put in a lot of work into into making it possible for you know people, organizations, and companies to run their own Wikibase, with the idea that at some point we would have a picture that looks like this: the Wikibase ecosystem, where all the data that we already have and all the data that we already connect to is you know further enriched and connected to many individual wikis that publish specialized data. So when we talk about the Wikibase ecosystem, what we really are looking at at a, you know, um, at a longer term is this interconnected web or interconnected hub of a growing number of different Wikibase instances you know, that are focusing or specializing in different topics. You know, and we would hope that they would have communities like a community of, communities of users around them. So in this ecosystem, individual Wikibases could be connected between themselves and then back to Wikibase. Um, development on Wikibase is an ongoing process. One of the exciting features is Wikidata Wikibase Federation. Um, and basically what this feature does is it enables people who have a Wikibase to directly access remote copies, sorry, to directly access remote Wikidata properties into their custom Wikibase instance. So instead of creating properties when they set up, you know, a Wikibase for the first time, they can simply make use of the properties that the, the Wikidata community have spent several years defining. They can simply just reuse them and, and they don't have to start from scratch. And um, beyond this, Federation, Wikidata Wikibase Federation that is currently available to um, Wikibase users. This feature in the future can be extended to make it possible to access properties from instances other than Wikidata. So Wikibase A could possibly access properties from Wikibase B and then so on. And once this happens, it becomes super easy for people to be able to reuse data from Wikidata and you know, from the other instances in this uh, Wikibase ecosystem. And finally, we launched a new service called Wikibase Cloud in April this year. And Wikibase Cloud allows people to have an even easier way to try out and evaluate Wikibase without having to go through any technical process of you know, installing Wikibase. Honestly, installing Wikibase is tricky. It's not the most trivial of things. So what Wikibase is designed to do is to help, you know, non-technical users to be able to set up a Wikibase instance very quickly. At the moment, we are making it available to uh, WBStack users, you know, as a closed beta with the goal for like later expansion. So if you want an instance to try out, at the end of this presentation, we'll share out an application form where you can you know, just let us know your interest. And then we ask you to join a waiting list. And then we hopefully will give you um, access to it. 
Wikibase Cloud at some point. And that is it. I'll pass it to Alan to talk some more about uh, some interesting Wikibase use cases out there. Yes, uh, thank you, Mohammed. So you know, after hearing about Wikidata, Wikibase, um, and you know, description of the software, the technology, the product behind what we do, um, I think it'd be interesting to share with you what, how some of these uh, our products are being used in the real world today. <coughs> Just to give a general overview now, um, Wikibase is at a glance. So Wikibase is a working solution for the needs of scientists and researchers you know, managing heterogeneous data sets. So at Wikibase, uh, one of our key advantage is that we have a strength in numbers, right? Because we have a community, we have got people using it, we have got you know, um, developers to, uh, building extensions and surrounding the software. So it makes our solution a very sustainable one in the long term. So as of March this year, um, these are some statistics, you know, um, Wikibase used for research, there are about 63 or more than 63 ongoing projects and about 10 pilot projects. And um, there are about 148 individual user accounts in the wild and about 510, I think, instances on the WB stack as well as the marketing to the wikibase.com. So, you know, the development support in the community. I mean, we have about more than 200 over uh, Telegram groups, about 180 something or less than 200 contributors on GitHub alone. So as you can see, um, uh, from this pie chart alone, we have about 42% of our users in Wikibases, they are from uh, the Glam space. And, you know, 19% um, of them are from the uh, science you know, in the science area, science and research area, we have government and policy makers as well who uses uh, Wikibase instances, who set up Wikibase instances for their own uh, use cases, as well as, you know, other categories as well. Of course, we don't forget that Wikidata is one of the Wikibase instance. So one of the examples that I want to share is uh, enslave.org. Enslave was launched in uh, 2020. It is a link open data database about the history of transatlantic slave trade. Um, they use Wikibase as a linking and reconciliation hub and slave unites about seven separate scholarly databases and contains more than 950,000 records about people, events, and places. Um, what this project is really interesting is that um, it brings all these separate data repositories together in one spot and they use Wikibase as a linking and reconciliation hub. So, so basically by using Wikibase, they are, able, they are able to remove all the silos that used to separate these data repositories into one place. It is more accessible where they can query and collectively add it together. So I have um, to the link of the... Um, the Wikibase instance here. So I've also shared this slide on the uh, Etherpad. So you can also take a look at it later on and just click under the link. So the other example that I want to share is uh, Rhizome. Rhizome has been one of our early, base, early Wikibase partners since 2015. They are an art organization based in New York City and started using Wikibase to archive their born digital art data as well as in digital preservation activities. So Rhizome was founded in 1996 as an online initiative by net artists, right? Um, so internet-based art, so to speak, you know, is a form of art that uses new media and specifically the internet as its medium. So what Rhizome does is that it deals with art pieces that have been made especially for the internet, you know, not the digitized classical artworks that you know you take a photo of a Mona Lisa, not that kind, but really art pieces that have been made especially for the internet. And today, Rhizome is an affiliate of the new museum in New York City. So what is interesting is that the flexible model of Wikibase captures the constantly changing nature of digital art, right? So in general, they found that classic database systems are very limited for their use cases and databases for collections in the art and museum sector tend to use categories that are assigned to classical art, classic art, Hence, you know, for, for example, there's like one art creator 
one artwork creator, one date of creation, and it has a physical location and maybe some dimensions. And these categories are really not what um, digital art uh, uh, are suitable for and compatible for. So with Wikibase, it, um, what Ryzen did is that it used this basic schema of items, properties, and qualifiers, and it offers a lot more flexibility to describe an ever-changing feel like internet art. Yeah. So the German National Library is one of our partners since I think about 2018. Um, they have been piloting Wikibase for its integrated authority file. Is as you may know, the German yeah, sorry, the German integrated authority file is known as the GND. Yeah, it's Gemeinsame Nomdatei. It represents and describes entities uh, which are then used in cataloging. It is a very authoritative. Uh, file across German-speaking countries. And the idea really is to be enable collaborate, collaborative maintenance of the authority file. So I've also put a link of the, uh, of the uh, Wikibase instance there. You can feel free to take a look at it and have a feel and sense of what the Wikibase, what their Wikibase instance looks like. So for those of you who do not know, the GND, which is the Integrated Authority File by the German National Library, contains more than you know, 9.5 million records for personal, corporate, conference, geographical names, you know, uh, name titles, etc. So it is operated by the German National Library across all German-speaking library networks. So this is actually pretty huge uh, when they use Wikidata. I'm oh, sorry, Wikibase to be able to uh, uh, in their in their work. So the European Union Commission, yes, um, fairly recently they have launched uh, the uh, EU Knowledge Graph. It is a Wikibase instance managed and maintained by a team at the EU Commission. So the EU Knowledge Graph contains structured data, information about insti European institutions, cities, EU funded projects, etc. So it also acts as the primary repository for the EU Cohesio website, uh, which is the EU funded projects. So now the Cohesio website is the interface uh, that contains information about you know uh, where the EU funds go to in terms of their projects, and the EU knowledge graph is the database you know where uh, it's powered by uh, it's a Wikibase instance database managed by the team at the European Union Commission. So just to be very clear on these two aspects, um, Cohesio currently accounts for about one third of the EU budget. And that is a lot of money, right? And what they're doing here is really to show all the different ways where the money is being given out, who's getting the money, who's getting the funding, you know, um, and what are the projects description about. So everything's very transparent on the Cohesio website. So this is the front end where they have a nice website where people can go and have a look at the different projects and see you know, how much money is being funded and go to who and go to where and what is being achieved. So interestingly, it is a really cool project that promotes transparency in government spending. So um, another example that I want to talk about is uh, Fact Grid. So Fact Grid is a project by the Goethe Research Center and hosted by the University of Erfurt here in Germany. So the project started off to document the history of the Illuminati. Uh, Illuminati is the secret society group, yeah? Uh, it's not the one that you see in Doctor Strange 2, you know, the, from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, so the project started off you know, with Illuminati and has now evolved into a collaborative historical database used by historians. So this is exceptionally, especially so after the collaboration in 2019 with the German National Library where they bring the GNT data into fact grid. So I've also put a Wikibase instance here. Um, oh, and of course, uh, apart from these examples that I've shown you, there were also other examples that use Wikibase instance as well. For example, the French National Library, they also use Wikibase instance, um, the Smithsonian libraries in the US, and we are also talking to several other partners as well. So we, I mean, we can have a discussion and Q&A &A right now, but I just want to move on to several slides where I can show you the different links uh, where you can access some of the information that I've talked about. Um, you can join the Wikibase community as well. 
And this is an overview of um, how you can stay in touch with us. So uh, all this, the presentation slide will be shared with everyone and it's really, the link is, is really put there into the etherpad. So feel free to access it, download it and click onto the links and write an email to us if you want more information about sort of use cases, examples. And if you can think of any use case examples in India, how you know we can also bring Wikibase into India and um, free up the knowledge and data so that everyone in the world can be able to access and people in India can also access the data and knowledge from other parts of the world. So uh, feel free to just jump in to a call with us, email us or something. So with that, thank you very much uh, for listening. <laughs> so maybe I can stop sharing and I can come back into the room. Hi. So uh, feel free to ask any questions or anything that you want to share. Uh, we are here for you. So the copy of the presentation, um, Ashwin was asking about it. I'll, there's a link to it in the Etherpad. Okay, Frederick has also shared the actual copy itself, so you can access it. Ah, uh, yes, okay. So yeah, Wikibase, yeah, Mohammed has really answered the question on um, on the list of Wikibase installs in Glens. Yes, um, just to share with everyone, we do not have a list of every, every Wikibase instance out there. As you may know, uh, we are open source free software. Anyone and everyone can download Wikibase from, you know, via Docker images uh, and possibly next time on Wikibase Cloud. And, you know, and then we don't keep track of who downloads what and what the Wikibase instances are. So we only know some of these examples if they you know, come to us and say, hey, you know, we want to build a, uh, a, a Wikibase instance and we have some issues here, can you support us in this? Then we know, oh, okay, so these guys are doing it, the Wikibase instance. So otherwise, if you set up a Wikibase instance in your home, your own database, we would have no knowledge of that. Yes, Ashwin. Hi, Alan. Um, thank you for the presentation that you've given so far, and uh, it was interesting to see the use cases. Uh, however, uh, you know, it uh, seemed from the use cases listed that, and since we know that this is a large and complex software program, which requires a lot of technical knowledge, that mostly, you know, uh, only very large organizations with the uh, the technical ability and uh, uh, financial resources would be able to set up a wiki base for their purposes. Are you aware uh, of any small organization or small efforts which are able to use wiki base? Uh, yes, of course. The reason why we bring in the, the, the big ones because, you know, they have a brand name to it. And, you know, if these big guys <laughs> are using it, then it shows that there's a certain level of um, uh, expertise and they're convinced of the product and software that we have so yes and we we do have uh, several individuals who set up small wiki based projects i mean like myself i set up my own wiki based instance as well to just put a collection of books that i have you know as just to archive them because i've bought so many books and read so many books novels and all this over the years and then instead of putting a spreadsheet i just put into my own wiki based instance so you are absolutely correct, uh, Ashwin, that uh, setting up your own Wikibase instance requires certain technical knowledge and technical know-how. And that is um, why we have developed Wikibase as a service known as the Wikibase.cloud. It is a new product that we are launching probably end of this year. Uh, we have already started migrating some of our users from WP Stack into Wikibase Cloud and it's in beta version right now and hopefully to launch it to the public, you know, open to the public, to everyone, probably the fourth quarter of this year, right? Um, and with the Wikibase as a service, wikibase.cloud, you can just go up to the, click the link, go there, set up a user account, and voila, you are already there. So it's fairly straightforward and easy. It's like setting up your own, um, uh, what, what's that, uh, Google Drive, or setting up, up your own uh, uh, OneDrive, you know, it's just as easy as, creating a username and, and a password and you have an account. 
So, however, uh, for the big partners that we have, they really want to have their own uh, uh, knowledge base. They host, they host, they want to host their own uh, data themselves. So that's why they download the uh, wiki, set up wiki base via Docker images, and they have their own technical guys to build the thing from scratch. Uh, but just to share with you, um, we are also aware that of our library, library partners, they do not have the technical know-how, and that's why they went and seek uh, us for support, and we will also guide them into the Wikibase community. As you know, you know the community is very active, and you know, community members like yourselves here, like one of you here, you are very active, you're very friendly, and you're always willing to help and support you know, each other. So we do have a fairly active community. Um, am I right, Mohammed? Yes, I think you covered it excellently. I don't have anything else. Um, Ashwin, do we have another question? Or because I see your hands is still raised. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm also on the grant committee of, uh, for South Asia and uh, SARC region. So I just wanted to know that if someone wanted to do, uh, you know, something useful on Wikibase and all, would he require uh, funding? No, you do not require any funding. Our software is totally free and open source. You can download, um, you can set it up yourselves. I mean, by I'm making it very simplistic. And by yourselves means you must have some technical know-how. But once we launch the Wikibase Cloud, you can just freely do it yourself. You do not require any funding at all. Um, however, if you're talking to a, a library or a museum in India and they have, you know that they are trying to, um, to create metadata, you know, or they have digital content and they want to put it into a knowledge base and they want to share with the rest of India and share with the rest of the world what they have and they're looking for a software to do that, then Wikibase is a very good software because you do not need to, you know, um, pay for the service, right? You can download and use the service and they can use the funding, whatever budget that they have to give, um, to pay their technical crew, technical staff to do some upgrading, to go and learn some wiki skills and knowledge, you know, and then you can use the funding for other purposes, right? Essentially for the people. And this is something that we really encourage, you know, to develop the capacity uh, of the, uh, the technical capacity of the uh, local community. Yeah. So money is better used to develop capacity. So we do not charge anything for the software. And But if you have any projects that they want to use Wikibase and they say, I want to get funding from somewhere else, um, Wikimedia Germany will be very happy to provide you a letter of support right, so that the institution is able to apply for funding, you know, and they can see, oh, we're co they're collaborating with Wikimedia Germany, and you know, we have a very good brand name, right, so it would give them a better advantage in getting the funding, securing the funding, yeah, so we do that as well. Thank you very much, that was a comprehensive answer, and it has clarified some doubts that I had. Thank you. Thank you. So feel free to ask any any question. If I cannot answer any technical questions, you know, I will come back to you. I will ask my technical college, but I do the best as I can. And Mohammed is here as well. <laughs> I see one comment here in the chat. Um, Sarko had some <coughs> specific queries about the. I don't think I understand what you wrote, Frederick. I think Frederick is asking um, the team, the audience here, if they have any specific queries. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when I read queries, my mind automatically went to query service. <laughs> yeah, I know I know this is, I mean, this can be new uh, to, to some of you here. I mean, previously it was also very new to me as well. I mean, when we first all get to know about Wikibase Wikidata, it's just fairly new. Um, but we have uh, a lot of use cases and we've been very successful use cases as well that we interact with both in America as well as in Europe and some parts of, I'm not sure in Asia. Yeah, but um, at this point in time is part of what we, what we really want to do is to move out of the, you know, the Western Europe, North America region and to bring the software, the technology, the product 
um, into the uh, other parts of the world and at the same time to develop the technical capacity as well. So we're not here to say, okay, that's Wikidata Wiki base, you know, these are the products and services, but we are here to say, hey, you know, if there is there are good use cases, we are here to help to support. If you require any um, capacity development um, um, workshops, we will be also very happy to you know arrange and organize for some of the uh, events like this. Yeah, so that the community as a whole will will be able to gain and benefit from you know the technical skills, and then we can support uh, the local institutions and partners who are interested in Wikibase and of course Wikidata. Yes, Ashwin. Uh and you know the you, you mentioned in that draft in that graph that you had shown you it seemed that 42 percent of the data pertains to glam so uh, glam uh, uh, organizations that is gallery libraries archives and musics for those of us who are not aware of what it stands for uh, uh, are using a lot of uh, wikibase so uh, is wikibase a replacement for their uh, archive management software or is it an add-on for their archive management software? Uh, Mohammed, do you want to answer this or should I take it? Um, so I, I think our goal generally and this would be awesome if all of the clowns are actually using Wikibase as they are, you know, their metadata to and using it to do a uh, to archive all of their collections. Um, I don't think we have, um, we know for certain if they are using it as an added to or as their primary tool for their archiving. Uh, we don't have that kind of data, but generally what we do know is, you know, when we hear of clans that are using Wikibase, we get excited about it and then we we add it to our list of like, you know, list of clans that we know that are using it. Um, I don't know if that helps with your question. Well, maybe I can add on as well. It depends yeah. on the size of the uh, GLAN partners that we, that are using Wikibase. Um, for some of the smaller partners, they, they want to have a um, system, a software um, that they, it doesn't cost them money, you know? At the same time, it is easy for them to, to access to the community to build extension and tools around a software, which they can then put and archive their little collection. And when I say little collection, it can be like maybe, I don't know, a, a few thousand items, right, to put inside there, just to store there, you know. And, and then they want to be able to share this little knowledge base archive that they have with the rest of the world. And then they will, fed, they, will have, they will put federated properties and they can connect with Wikidata so that they can enrich the knowledge base that they have, the database that they have with items of Wikidata. Yeah? So when people query, they, they can be shown as well. So, um, um, so there are small projects like this. I mean, they enjoy doing it. It can be individual, it can be research institutes, it can be in some, like for example, recently, I was speaking with uh, one of the top universities in Germany, the Free University Berlin. Um, they, uh, they are in the um, Digital Humanities uh, Research Group and they are using Wikibase to archive and to load some of the, the kind of research that they do to put inside, you know, and as well as to share what they have been doing with the rest of the world as well. So, and there's like 5,000 items. So that's not a lot, small ones, yeah. But I got to know about it because they came to us and say, hey, Alan, can you please do a presentation to share about the future, the roadmap, you know? So then it's, oh, so you're using it. I didn't know that, yeah. And there are big institutions, you know, who already have their own, you know, software and system. The libraries, example, they use the Mark, you know, system uh, to, to run uh, their own so-called database and query the different cataloging systems, right? And they will come to use Wikibase, sometimes not as the main primary one, but to share some parts of their data with the rest of the world. Because um, it could be experimental, it also could be that um, the software that they have now is very old, you know, it's a legacy software that they use. Because it's, it's just a cataloging software, right? Cataloging tool that they use. 
And if it's getting old, it's getting quite outdated and they want to update it to something that's pretty modern and they want to be able to um, be part of the link open data web. So they just, they can, they can use Wikibase to replace that, yeah. But this is optional. Um, of course, if they want to replace a system like a software like this, they have, they have a budget, they don't have uh, develop certain capacity for that. Our software is free, they don't need to, you know, we don't need to set aside any budget to buy the software. They just need to invest the budget into developing capacity for their staff. And this is a benefit for them. So um, the use case differs from individuals to individuals, partners to partners. Uh, we do not have a list of how and where the use cases are being uh, used by the GLAM partners. But what we do know is it's a variety. Yeah, um, it depends on the individual. Uh, situation that they have and the situation that they face. So I, I know it's not a good answer to your question, but yeah, it really depends. So. <laughs> uh, uh, Alan, uh, you know, from what you understood, I will just like to uh, tell you, take a few minutes to tell you what I understood from you and uh, what I've understood about the relationship between a Glam Museum Zone software and Wikibase. Now, uh, every GLAM institution has got their own archive management software. And in that software, there is a certain amount of category linking. There are some uh, keywords, what we would call. Uh, and they permit a little amount of uh, knowledge, uh, you know, linking as such. But Wikibase, on the other hand, isn't so much concerned with the archive management and the traditional facilities, but it gives then opportunity for this GLAM institution to use each of their holdings as a, uh, as a knowledge point and to link it to uh, the knowledge web so that we either uh, by being part of the uh, open wiki base uh, through the use of federation which you mentioned or even internally without being linked, they can create uh, a knowledge base of their own which reflects uh, so that a person who is seeing the uh, archive and catalog uh, can see what is there but cannot understand what is the relation. Whereas you could use your wiki base to find resources about a subject by you know following the various links in any direction that you wish to go. So uh, suppose like you had given for Maya Angelo and uh, so, so then suppose it showed that she has won a prize then you can jump to the prize and then you can uh, see who all have won that prize uh, or from that prize you can go to another author from that author you can go to say if that author is from Ghana see which all authors are from Ghana and uh, you can traverse that knowledge web using the application which we made in uh, wiki base uh, is my interpretation uh, reasonably correct I would say yes <laughs> I think that you know, the ability to, to be able to interlink different knowledge concepts. So you can hop from one idea to the other, item A to item B is one of like the truly remarkable features of the um, Wikibase software. So yeah, I totally, um, all that you said was on point. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Ashwin, for your for your nice summary and able to connect the dots together. Um, I think this is amazing, right, Mohammed, that, uh, that there's this level of understanding. Yeah. And I think what, what we also want to really um, add on is that if you, I put a link to Wikidata there. If you can see Wikidata um, is, I'll, I'll, I'll put uh, inverted commas, is the mother of all databases for structured data in the world, one of the largest one, yeah. Uh, you have got many big corporations that take the reuse data from Wikidata in their products and solution for the customers, you know, end users. And you have got um, individual projects, you know, school projects, universities, you know, or even um, open source uh, projects that also take data from Wikidata and reuse in their projects, right, to develop their own solutions and, 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 uh, and software and tools and extension. So Wikidata is really the best example of a Wikibase use case. 
So if we are able to um, effectively and efficiently uh, power Wikidata with more than 97 million items and 1.3 edits, um, we really have the kind of capacity to, um, to make sure that they are your wiki-based instance of a few thousand or a few million items uh, will be uh, safe, stable, and secure. Having said that, um, that there are issues with wiki-bases. There are issues with Wikidata as well. And that's why the software development team at Wikimedia Germany, we are constantly working hard. My colleagues are working hard to deal with the issues raised by the community, raised by the users every day. Um, when they put up a ticket on Fabricator and to try to resolve them as well. So, I mean, th there's no software in the world that's perfect and there's no problems, yeah. We have our own problems and we acknowledge that. We are not a perfect uh, software uh, provider, but we do our best with the help and support from the community. We are not alone. We are together with the whole community. Uh, that's why we need feedback from you. We need feedback from everyone here, you know, on whether you think that Wikibase is something that can be used and relevant for the use case in India. We very much hope to be, yeah, and that's why we are here. Um, because India generally, there's a, uh, we have, we are highly digitized, you know, there's a lot of metadata in, across the various GLAM institutions uh, in India. And many of them are in different multi-languages English as well as other local community languages. And we really want to bring and showcase these um, cultural language, multi-language uh, capabilities through our Wikibase uh, software so that we can bring this to the rest of the world and other people in, in other schools, in other parts of the world is able to access your kind of information that you have in the local language. And then we have our translation software to, to translate in whatever language you know, they, 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 are, they are used to. So this, this is in a way something that we really want to, and hopes to do, and the reason why we are here, you know, uh, to bring our Wikibase solution, free open source Wikibase solution into India with the help of uh, everyone here. So please feel free to think about whether it's relevant for the use case in, in, in your community and the work that you do. Yeah. So um, I'll be happy to hang on for about five more minutes for any further questions or any comments that you may have. And uh, yeah, so if you have any comments, please feel free to share as well. I, I would, we love feedbacks. We love to hear from, from uh, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> And also maybe to feel free to reach out later. That is also fine. Uh, we can reach either Alan or myself. And, and yeah, you can use the Etherpad also if you feel more comfortable or just write us an email. Yeah, Alan, I have a small question. Uh, for like a, a user who has no experience in using Wikidata or uh, Wikibase, uh, what would be the kind of uh, inputs that would uh, be needed uh, by him to actually start using? And what would be the time frame required? Would it be easy to like uh, uh, start using it, or would it be uh, would much training be required? Um, I have to be honest with you here. Um, we have got two ways of using two main ways of using Wikibase, our Wikibase products. The first is Wikibase Suite. Wikibase Suite means you can download and install your own setup of Wikibase instance via Docker images, which requires certain technical skills. Yeah. Um, I've tried and done that myself. It's a bit challenging. I'm not a technical person. Many of you here are much smarter and more intelligent than me in terms of your IT skills. For me, you know, I just, I can build my own PC to play games. And <laughs> Probably that's about it, yeah. I mean, I develop my own websites as well, once in a while, just for fun, but that's as much as I, you know, where my technical knowledge is. But many of you here are, are much smarter than me. Um, so I try to download and set up Wikibase uh, using Docker images, easy Wikibase suite. It is a bit challenging. Um, I go through the documentation step by step. Some of the terminologies to me are a bit, um, woo, you know, I have to Google them as well. So 
Having said that, we have a second product, like I mentioned earlier on, the Wikibase Cloud, where you can just go to the website and just um, set up a user account, and then you are able to uh, have your own Wikibase instance. That is fairly straightforward and fairly easy. In a matter of minutes, you can set it up. So um, when you ask me how long it takes to set up a Wikibase instance, it really depends on the technical know-how. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure um, some of you here are extremely technically technical savvy, and you can hmm, I can set up a Wikibase download, and you know you can fairly read fairly quickly in a matter of hours. I don't know, one two hours or so. Yeah. But if you are really like me, you know, totally no nope, nothing, <laughs> you go to Wikibase Cloud, set up your own user account. And then that's it, <clears throat> yeah. So, um, but again, if you are talking to a library with hundreds and thousands of items after they set up the Wikibase instance, they want to import these items inside, they want to have their own little beautify, beautification, different features, then you require some uh, technical skills. And the, the community is always there to support. We provide documentations on our uh, websites. And uh, we will be very happy to share this with you. I'm not sure if it's inside the, I think it's in the slide, yeah. Yeah, it's in the last slide. So last slide. I could quickly also add that I think the easiest way to, to start to, like for someone who's like wanting to begin would be to start looking at the community pages, for example, either the Wikibase community pages or the Wikibase the community pages, um, whatever your interests lie. So we have, the, for example, the, Wik, the Wikibase community user group. We have the mailing list, which you can sign up to. There are the Telegram channels. We have the monthly live sessions where we bring people together to talk about Wikibase. And yeah, similarly on Wikidata, we have the project chat where you know uh, this month we have a platform where people can you can go to that page and talk to other community members and get to know what you know people are up to what projects people are doing and all of that so yeah um, a simple answer to your question about how to get involved would be to look at the community pages and then if possible sign up to um, to them like the mailing list for example you can just sign up to it and then you can be getting updates on from us and also from the community. Uh, I wish to yeah. add one more thing so that for big organizations that have a lot of money to spend, yeah, sometimes they will employ or outsource or find a contractor, they call them Wikibase consultants. I mean, they will contract them for like, I don't know, one, two years for the length of the project. And these consultants, it can, they can be individual, they can be some companies, you know, with the Wikibase uh, skills, technical skills. And, you know, they will be able to provide uh, the whole setup, the whole services. So this is one of the, one of the uh, channels that we use as well for those uh, big organizations. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, another question I had was like, you've been talking about libraries. Now, is this like more of catalog cataloging or are there entire books that are put up there and all the information is available in searchable format, something like that? Do you want to? Yeah, so basically what we are talking about is the metadata and not the, the product itself, not the books themselves, but the metadata of the books. Okay. Yeah. As far as, uh, as, far as the entire text goes, there are other projects like uh, Wikisource and, uh, you know, which, uh, which share copyright expired, uh, expired books online. In fact, uh, we were thinking of having something for Goa like that. That's a very nice, good idea. Uh, I, I just like to add that, uh, you know, uh, the point which Lucas uh, was saying was that whether wiki uh, base or wiki data provides repository features. No, it doesn't. But what it does allow you is to take this uh, metadata of all these books and link them in ways which you can find useful to traverse as also to maintain a knowledge web or a semantic web 
about your holding. So with the, if you have a semantic web or a knowledge web, like we said, you can traverse it. You can uh, explore it with queries, which uh, wiki that uh, wiki uh, da, wiki data permits, and uh, similar ways. And these can be very very powerful. For example, you could ask that which are the books which are written by Goan authors who are who who were who who were living outside Goa, or who died between the years sixteen hundred and ten to this thing, or which were written in a different language and translated into Konkani, and that sort of thing. But the actual uh, work of uh, getting these resources, scanning them, curating them, posting them, making a repository, and carrying out the standard library uh, classification work, that is not uh, what wiki uh, data or wiki base is meant for. That we have to do, and then we can use this and piggyback uh, wiki base or wiki data on it to create that semantic web or that knowledge web. By which we can produce better search facilities and better knowledge facilities to others. Thank you. Um, I think our time is running up. So yeah, before, before uh, the next set of questions come in, we will just wind up here because uh, I know you are time conscious in Germany. Uh, Alan, I want to thank you so much, uh, and also Mohammed and uh, everyone who has come here. Uh, we are running a little bit short of time, and Alan and the moment they are in the middle of their day, uh, work day, so we will not keep them. But in case anyone wants to get in touch and all, please, I would be most happy to continue this, uh, you know, con connection in whatever way possible. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming here. I know you have a, a busy day yourself and uh, work. Some of them are at work here, listening on the quiet, and and others have been uh, through issues of health and things like that. Thank you. Thanks again, Alan. Thanks again, Norman. All the best. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick, for organizing this. And thank you, everyone, for spending time and coming here. It is the first time, it may be the first time you hear about Wikibase Wikidata, but it's not the last time, I can assure you. We will continue to organize more of these type of exchanges or even uh, uh, technical workshops if required. So please feel free to stay in touch with everyone and stay healthy. And yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alan. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Frederick. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Have a, have a great evening. Yeah.